هيدا اللي شايفه انت بيعمل اثنين طن بودره بيعمل بحدود ال 2000 هقه بودره يعني قد ايه بيطلع مصاري هيدا تقريبا؟ هودي بيطلعوا مليونين دولار اوف هودي بيطلعوا مليونين دولار Lebanon is the third largest producer of cannabis resin. For decades, this underground business has been controlled by the communities of the Bekaa Valley. But in 2020, this changed as Lebanon became the first Arab country to legalize cannabis cultivation for medicinal export. كل الزراعات التقليدية مثل بيقولوا ما بتيجي عنا إلا هي هاي الشكل أول ما دخلت كان على الضيعة غيرت نفسية أهل البلد هذا. In the face of economic ruin, a raging COVID problem, and the capital city devastated by one of the world's largest non-nuclear blasts in modern history, the government is looking at the enormous cannabis industry as a way of propping up the economy. So this is one of the highest yielding and, and value crops in the world. It's like growing money on trees, it is. For the autonomous communities currently running the weed trade though, this isn't great news. Dealers have been happily getting rich from the illegal trade for decades, and they don't want a government that they neither trust nor respect stepping into their world. Now, the Bekaa Valley is the center of a potentially violent tension between the old drug networks run by DIY criminal communities and the unstoppable world of big business taking over medicinal marijuana. Hello everyone, Kifak, good, 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 hello. I've come to Beirut to meet Daniel Yezbik, a Lebanese-American businessman who helped the government draft the recent legislation. Daniel has been investing in legal cannabis industries around the world since 2013, and he's come to Lebanon hoping to be the first to capitalize on the Lebanese cannabis market. So you can take this CBD now and infuse it and make a CBD patch, so I mm. can go in here and put a uh, a, a transdermal patch for pain. Right. You have interesting products like these. This one you're gonna like. Um, this is a, this is a, I don't know if you're gonna like it. It's a suppository. <laughs> so basically, so basically this. One. What got you so excited at the time to be contacting people about the, specifically Lebanon before it was even legalized? Uh, there's a lot of reasons I want to come to Lebanon, but one of the one of the primary interesting things is that it's it's very it's, it costs very it's very cheap to produce cannabis in Lebanon, mm -hmm. and it's and it's even cheaper today with the economic crisis and because the Lebanese lira versus the dollar. Beyond this, and even more importantly, the Lebanese cannabis genetics, the Lebanese cannabis plant in itself has unique properties that makes it more medicinally relevant. Okay. So it's got a higher CBD to THC ratio. And CBD is the miracle molecule. Do you have any fears that you might lose millions in this deal? Once it gets going, I won't have fears. It's a crop that grows. It's like growing money on trees, it is. This is one of the highest yielding and, and value crops in the world. And it's the most medically relevant. It's beautiful. It's such a beautiful <laughs> plant, you know? Many view this, especially the growers, the farmers, the people in the autonomous communities in the Baka Valley, view this as a capitalization on an already existing industry. What do you think about that? Well, it's already exists, but these people have warrants on their heads. Do you want to continue to live with warrants on your heads and then basically a bunch of guns and people protecting you and then every once in a while when the government feels like grading you, that's what you want? It's for their own sake as well. I mean, they can continue to operate, but you can't operate so fla so publicly. That's, that's almost public corruption in your face. But then you're saying, well, we're hungry, so we need to feed our families. Okay, but, you know, technically it's not legal. In the past, violence erupted as the government attempted to eradicate the illegal trade while failing to provide an alternative source of income for farmers. These communities became more heavily armed and protective of their crops. Unable to interfere, the government was forced to turn a blind eye to the illicit industry. This has resulted in a power struggle between the armed Shia drug trafficking families who operate under tribal law. Essentially, the Bukhara Valley has become a wild west of the Middle East where fighting breaks out between tribes and then with the army when it attempts to enforce peace. Since 2011, as the war in Syria raged and the army was busy protecting the border from insurgents, power shifted further into the hands of the cartels and the cannabis industry boomed. 
Despite the new law being passed and millions of dollars being offered by investors, there's still no mechanism in place to make things happen. I'm on my way to the Bekaa Valley, where I'm going to be meeting Ali. Ali runs a cannabis business and he operates mainly in the black market. I want to talk to him and see if he's willing to transition to a form of white market and what his conditions would be. Ali is one of the Bekaa Valley's 40,000 people who have government warrants out for their arrest. We're coming up on a checkpoint now. We just got pulled over by a checkpoint for having the cameras, but luckily they uh, let us pass. These towns are riddled with checkpoints. They're surrounded by checkpoints by the army and the police force, and uh, it's hard to get in and out sometimes. But somehow they managed to run a global export business of cannabis an illegal export business of cannabis. Daniel will be joining us as well. He wants to show Ali what the future of this business could potentially be. Ali? <laughs> Contrary to most cannabis farmers, it was obvious that Ali made a fortune from the cannabis trade, enough to set him and his family up in a lavish estate. الدولة عندنا فايزتي نحن عندنا ان نحن انا شخصيا ما بامن انه عندنا دولة وانا اذا بتشلي راسي ما بروح بسلم حالي للدولة لاني ما بعترف فيها ما بامن فيها شو رايك بالتشريع اللي صار هلا؟ هلا التشريع مش لصالح وصالح مصرف لبنان سرقوا ما في اي مؤسسة رسمية بلبنان الا ما خصصوها وسرقوها ضل فيها الحشيش انا ما بدي شرعوا الحشيش بدي يعفوني وأنا لحالي بدي وطل الإزراء <تصفيق> يعني إذا شرعت الحشيشي وما عفيتني بدي أسمح لك تجينا عندي ما سعيتها بيصير عندي الإعاز الأكبر أنه أنا يكبش بالبضاعة أكثر منها كيف توصل هيدي البضاعة لبرا؟ أوعى تفكر في حدا بيقدر يمنع تاجر يودي بضاعة أو إذا بتجي 200 ألف دولة ولا ممكن تقدر تمنع حرب أدمغة بتسكرها من هون بتفتحها من هون يعني في كذا إلي للشغل في عندك سوريا تبعت من هون لسوريا بكلفك الطون رقم معين بتدفع بيمرو على البور هون على البور مثل ما عم ينشرى الوزير والنايب بينشرى اي ضابط في تشتري ما فيش كل واحد لبناني بعيد عنكم يعني بينشرى يعني معاش وما بكفي تاثرت المصلحه من انفجار البور في دتك بظل ال الخلبان الموجود والضياع واحد بينتهز الفرص يعني <تصفيق> وفي خطر عليك يومي بتعتبر ولا عايش؟ لا خطر ما في لاقول لك لا لانه الدوله منا غبيه ما الدوله بتعرف انه انت عم تعاني هلا الدوله اوكي منعتها عليك بس من ميله ثانيه تركتها انه ما تخليني اقول لقطه يعني في تعاون ماشي مع الدوله هلا في تعاون طبعا في تعاون انت هلا اسم الله معمر حياته والحياة اللي قدامك الحمد لله ما بتعت الهم شي نهار يفرط كله سوا من وراء هالتجارة اللي برات لا ما بعت الهم يفرط بتصدق انت انه اني عم ساعد عالم هوني بتضيع اكثر من الدولة عم ساعدون نفترض هلا بعتت 2 طن لبرا علي بيا حق الطن مليون و100 الف دولار بربح عليهم 700 الف او 600 الف انا لما اجيبهم لهون تعرف كم بايت وكم عائلة وكم بيأكلوا وبيشربوا وبيعلموا أولادهم وبيستفيدوا وبيشتغلوا وبيصير فيه حركة الله يعطيك العافية الصبا الصبا كلها سوا ها وزع حصص والصبا وخد إلك كمان يا الله 
Daniel hopes to persuade Ali to cooperate with the government by illustrating advancements in the global cannabis industry. We arrive at one of Ali's cannabis storage facilities where Daniel can test the levels of THC and CBD in the product with his patented portable device. <laughs> دانيال أخذت عين صغيرة لتفحصها أخذت عين صغيرة لنفحصها لنشوف شو الـ THC والـ CBD هيدا يمكن بيقول لك منيح للكانسر للبين وللسترس ومفروض يساعدك هابي انرجيتك وفوكست وبيزكي كم واحد بس علي أنت شو رأيك بهيك نوع تطور يجي ويصير بلبنان يصنع للاستعمال الطبي وللاستعمال الترفيه حتى مش غلط مش غلط فافضل لنا طبعا ان احنا بنستفيد كثير اذا عملوها للأخ... للاغراض الطبيه بس قلت لك هذا الموضوع ما بي... يعني ما بيترجم على الارض الا ما تشيل الطبقه الحاكمه كلها تكنسها وتكبها بالزباله اذا الدوله عملتها مضبوط وخلوك تعمل مصاري شو قال بعرف صلنا 20 سنه صلنا 20 سنه ناطرين الكهرباء صلنا 20 سنه اذا ما بيمشي الحال لايك هلا الدوله بدها تعطيني مليونين دولار بهاو انا حتعطيك مليون لا رح اقول لك شغله مليون مش مليونين مليون لا رح اقول لك شغله هيدي انا اذا بدي بيعها هون بلبنان اه بيعلي ب 200000 دولار بتعرف شو 200000 دولار معي انا يمكن بيضلوا معي ثلاث آه ايام اذا عطوا عفو و... وعمل لك مجال بهذا القانون انك مم. تاخذ رخصه وتزرع وتحصد وتصنع وتصدر لبرا مرخص وبتدفع فاتورتك التاكس وال 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 والضريبه واللايسنس والضريبه وكل شيء مع ليك انا عم اقول لك هيدا الشيء بتعرف ليه عم تضحك انا قدام الكاميرا عم بقول يعني حسك عم تنكت معي لا ما عم لبنان ما بيتعمر ولا بعمره بيتعمر خليك معي خليك كل شيء الوجوه هيدي موجوده السياسيه بلبنان ولا ممكن يزبط اي قانون شو فيها تعمل الدوله اللي يصير في ثقه عفو مشروط بيكون بناء على معطيات المتهم بريء لتثبت ادانته مش المتهم مدان ليثبت براءته انت جاي عم تعمل معي مقابله بمنطقتي بضيعتي ببيتي انا وكل نسله اه نحن هون لا مدى الدهر وابد الدهر مضطهدين يعني ما فيش حلول Months have gone by since the cannabis bill passed into law but nothing has moved on. This paralysis is symptomatic of a country that has been left rudderless since its government resigned last August in the aftermath of the Beirut port explosion. نحن عم نطلب بالعفو العام تقريبا من 2020 سنه هون القانون على الضعيف يعني قلوبهم كزبر الحديد ولا ممكن يحس يشعر معك كانسان 